underneath every figure drawing I do is a simple but dynamic gesture drawing. Gesture drawing is one of the most important but least understood aspects of the figure drawing process. So in this video, I'm going to show you first how I use gesture drawing as a training exercise to learn about the human body. And next, I'm gonna show you how I use gesture drawing as a foundation for more finished work. So before we get to a demonstration drawing, there are a few essential ideas that I want to introduce. So if you're new to figure drawing, you may be wondering what a gesture drawing even is. So I'd like to start off by giving a quick definition of what a gesture drawing actually is. A good gesture drawing captures the overall action and dynamism of a pose in a simplified way. Gesture drawings are usually done from shorter poses that can range from 10 minutes down to as short as 10 seconds. But gesture drawing isn't really about a length of time. Gesture drawing is more of an approach to drawing the figure that focuses on action, that focuses on capturing what the figure is doing. But you wanna be able to capture this in a very simplified way. A gesture drawing should not contain a lot of shading or detail. The goal here is to simplify the pose. So when you're first learning how to do figure drawing, gesture drawing is the skill that you should practice the most. But it's also something you should continue to practice no matter how skilled a figure drawer you become. Now in just a moment, we're gonna to go to the drawing board and I'm going to demonstrate gesture drawing. But before I start my demonstration, I wanna be clear. My way of doing gesture drawing is not the only way to do gesture drawing. Nearly every artist I know has a slightly different approach to gesture drawing and your job is to figure out what type of approach is going to work for you. What I'm about to demonstrate are the common elements that most gesture drawings use most of the time. So if you only learn these essential elements of gesture drawing, you'll have more than enough information to immediately incorporate this into your figure drawing process. So I begin every gesture drawing with a primary action line. A primary action line is a line that attempts to distill the entire pose into a single line by focusing on the primary action. So what I mean by that is that if we look at this pose, we can see a line that starts up here at the top of the head, moves down the front of the face, moves down the front of the torso, and comes all the way down the leg to the foot. It's this beautiful arching curve that runs from the top of the head down to the bottom of the foot. So I'm unifying all of these parts of the body, the head, the torso, the leg, and the foot into a single sweeping curve. I'm going to begin my gesture drawing by trying to capture this entire pose in a single primary action line. Now, of course, I am using light, soft lines to draw this primary action line. And this is because I know that I'm not gonna get it right the first time so I need something I can adjust easily. So I'm not even making a distinction at this point between the head, the torso, and the leg. It's all simplified into a single line. So once I have my primary action line, I'm gonna look for any secondary action lines because as you'll notice, this primary action line leaves a lot of elements of the figure out. So for example, it doesn't capture the arm that's going up it doesn't capture the leg projecting out. So I'm going to add these additional action lines that are attempting to capture the length and direction of these other parts of the body. And as I said before, I know that these are not in the right place yet, but I need something to start with. I need something to adjust. So I started off with a primary action line and I quickly moved to some secondary action line to capture the parts of the body that the primary action line missed. So we can also draw what are known as axis lines. Now there are two important axis lines that most poses should have. One is the axis or the tilt of the shoulders. So if you see, I can lay my pencil across the shoulders and figure out what this direction is. We also have an axis line at the hips. So you'll notice the hips are tilted in the opposite direction. So these two axis lines are a great way to start to flesh out the pose. So I'm gonna have this axis line up here for the shoulders. And again, I'm not drawing the shoulders themselves. I'm just indicating what direction they're traveling. And again, we have an axis line down here for the hips. So I'm gonna lay that in. So hopefully you can see these lines capture 
the tilt of the shoulders and the pelvis. So once we have some action lines and axis lines, I'm going to shift over to capturing the shape of the torso. Now this is an important shift because at this stage of the drawing, all we have are lines that represent the length and direction of these various parts of the body. But once we start to draw the shape of the torso, it's going to flesh it out. It's going to start to add some real dimension. So the shape of the torso has two important elements. First, we have the shape of the rib cage in the upper section of the torso. Now this upper chamber of the torso is shaped more or less like an egg. So the rib cage is shaped like an egg. The lower section of the torso contains the pelvis. And the pelvis, at this stage, I like to think of as a simple bowl shape. So you'll, it's almost like we've had a sphere that we've cut in half. So hopefully you can see that these two shapes start to pull together the overall shape of the torso. Now in many poses, you'll see one side of the torso collapse and we can see this cut in, this indentation in the side where it's bending. So I often like to include that indication that just shows that there's this indentation here at the side of the torso between the rib cage and the pelvis. From here, I can shape this bowl of the pelvis. So here we have a really simple shape of the torso. Now remember, at this stage, I know that these aren't correct yet, but one of the functions of gesture drawing serves is to give us something to work with, to evaluate, and to correct if necessary. So since I'm here drawing the shape of the torso, I'm going to add in a center line. And we can see a center line starting at the pit of the neck, running down the breastbone, down to the navel, and on down to the legs. Now adding this center line will go a long way in adding some three-dimensionality to your gesture drawing. And of course, at the top of the torso, we have this opening for the neck. Now one thing you'll note here is that I've deviated slightly from my initial primary action line, and that's totally fine. Remember, we don't expect to get all of these things right the first time. So I have a shape for the torso that adds some three-dimensionality to the gesture, but I'm actually going to keep the arms and legs just basic lines. But I am going to make some simple adjustments to try and capture the proportions of the pose that I'm seeing. So, at this point, I also want to ground the figure. I'm going to add a very simple indication of the feet. Now, it's very important to note at this stage that these are simplifications. I'm not doing a detailed drawing of a foot. It's just a very basic shape of the foot here. Same thing with this back leg. I'm going to shift it up a little, but then I'm just going to focus on the basic shape of the foot. And particularly where the foot is coming into contact with the ground. I'm gonna go up to the arm here, and I'm going to shorten the arm just a little bit. I made it a little too long. And of course, I need this arm over here as well. Remember, we're just trying to capture the distance and direction. We're not drawing fully fleshed out arms. When I'm drawing arms and legs, I want to pay particular attention to the location of the joints. So any of the bones at the joints that are jutting out, I try and include those, particularly the elbows, the knees, and if they're visible, the ankles. So one thing you'll notice is that as I'm drawing these action lines that represent the arms and the legs, I'm trying to go as far to the outer edge of the figure as I can. So for example, I chose to draw this outer edge of the arm rather than the inner edge. And this just helps us get a sense of the proportion of the entire pose. I also usually choose the convex side of a form. So for example, you'll see that this outer edge of the arm is bowing outward versus the inside, which is kind of bowing inward. Same thing for the forearm. You can see this convex side bowing outward, not the concave side bowing inward. 
Now, this isn't a concrete rule that you have to follow. It's just something to consider while you're drawing your gesture. You want to figure out what's going to best depict the pose most clearly. So at this stage, for the head, we only need to draw a very simple shape. Again, a gesture drawing should not be about detail. So for the head, I just tend to include the shape for the cranium as well as the jawline if they are visible. So again, these are very simple depictions of the form. Now I want you to take a look for a moment to see how closely this gesture conforms to that initial primary action line we drew. Look at this beautiful curve that starts at the top of the head and runs all the way down the figure. Now, one of the reasons we start off with that primary action line is to make sure we are capturing these beautiful moments. Again, no single anatomical detail is going to be as beautiful as finding this connection, this pathway that strings all of these parts of the body together. Another thing I want you to notice is how every line in this gesture drawing is curved. And in many cases, these curves are exaggerated. You know, this curve, if you're looking at it, may seem extreme, but hopefully you can see what a good job it does depicting the action of the pose. Hopefully you can see how adding these subtle curves to the arms and leg actually depict what the figure is doing. And in the end, that's what a gesture drawing really is. It's not a drawing of the figure itself. It's a diagram of what the figure is doing. Now, before I move on, I just wanna make a couple of refinements. And this is a critical thing for you to understand. If you have issues with the pose or the proportions, you wanna fix them at this stage. You wanna fix these issues before you add any detail or shading or contours. It is so much easier to say, make a leg longer or change the position of an arm when all you're changing are these simple lines. What you want to avoid is spending 20 or 30 minutes rendering complex anatomy only then to realize that the leg isn't long enough. So I want to make these evaluations now. So I'm going to go to this leg and I can see that I think this leg is just a little on the short side. So I'm going to drop this foot down and you'll notice I'm not erasing here. I'm just drawing my second and third attempts just slightly darker. That way I always know which lines were my earlier and lighter attempts and which lines are my later and darker attempts. Now this may seem like a subtle difference, but again, as you move through a drawing, all of these subtle proportional issues add up. So we wanna make sure we're catching them early and fixing them when it's easy to fix them when our drawing is just a simple gesture. So now that you have a sense of the elements that make up a gesture drawing, let's apply them to another pose. So of course, we're gonna begin with the primary action line, and hopefully you can see on this pose, we can find a line that runs all the way from the tip of the fingers, all the way down the arm, down the front of the torso, down the leg, and to the foot. Now, not every pose will have that clear of a primary action line, but many, if not most of them will. So again, I'm gonna start off just trying to capture that movement. So I'm gonna come down the arm, down the front of the torso, which is also the convex edge of the torso, down the leg, all the way down to the foot. And again, you'll notice that I'm using light, soft lines here so I can easily move them and adjust them as the drawing progresses. So you have a sense of the elements of gesture drawing, but it's important to note that you don't have to apply them in a particular order. I do recommend starting with the primary action line, but instead of going on to the secondary action lines, I'm actually going to start with the axis line for the shoulder. So hopefully you can see we have these shoulders at a dramatic tilt. And I wanna make sure I'm capturing that in my drawing. And from here, I'm actually going to start to flesh out the shape of the torso. And again, we can see this beautiful indentation here in between the rib cage and the pelvis. And then I'm going to draw the rest of the shape of the torso. 
So again, I'm keeping the shape very simple at this stage because I know I'm likely to change it later on. So now I'm going to add in an action line for the leg that is projecting forward. I'm gonna indicate where the knee is, and then I'm gonna drop a line down the front of the leg and down to the foot. So this is a very simple drawing so far, but hopefully you can actually start to see the shape of the body coming into focus. So at this point, I'm going to draw a simple line for the other arm. And again, you'll notice that I'm working on the convex side of the arm, not the concave side. So the side where it's bowing outward, coming down to the hand. And at this stage, again, the hand can just be a very simple shape. We just need to give the most basic indication. We don't wanna spend any time rendering fingers or any details in the hand because there is a high likelihood that we are going to change its location. Remember, this is just our first attempt. So now I'm going to indicate the elbow, bring the arm up just a little, and again, just a very simple indication of what the hand is doing. Remember, we're not drawing the body parts themselves. We are simply indicating what they are doing. I'm gonna pull a center line down the torso. Now in this pose, we have a really nice twist and the center line on the rib cage is more toward the center, but we can actually see as it comes down the pose, it's going more toward the right side. And I'm gonna place simple indication of the navel here. So one thing you'll notice is that every pose has unique elements and you're not going to use the same elements in every single gesture drawing. You wanna be flexible and figure out what's most important in any given pose. What are the defining characteristics of the pose? What are the essential characteristics that you wanna include in your simplification? So. One thing you can see here is this leg is projecting toward us. The knee is very prominent here, but I've drawn the leg on our left too long. That leg on our left is going back into space and it's getting smaller as it goes into perspective. So again, I'm very glad I didn't spend a lot of time rendering the details of this leg because I'm about to shorten it considerably. So we're gonna pull this foot up as well. And I want to keep in mind the relationship between these two feet. Hopefully you can see they're at quite a dramatic tilt. And I want to make sure I'm capturing that in the pose. So all in all, I'm feeling pretty good about this gesture drawing. I think it's capturing the most important elements of this pose. I'm going to flesh out the shape of the torso just a little more just to give some extra context. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this gesture drawing. It strikes me as dynamic, and I think it's capturing the most important parts of the pose in a very simple way. So here at the end of this gesture drawing, I wanted to point out how prominent this primary action line is. Again. Notice that it dominates this pose. And if we hadn't focused on this right at the beginning, we might have missed this beautiful arching curve that runs all the way down this pose. So this is why it's so important to begin with that primary action line to make sure you're pulling all of these separate parts of the body together into one beautiful and dynamic whole. So at this point, you should have a very clear idea of what gesture drawing is the elements that a good gesture drawing contains, and how to apply them in your figure drawings. I've been drawing the figure for something like 30 years now, and I still practice gesture drawing dozens of times every single week. So practicing gesture drawing when you're first starting out is critical because it will give you a very strong sense of what the body is, how it looks, how it moves, and its proportions. So if you're new to figure drawing, you should practice gesture drawing more than any other aspect of the figure drawing process. Gesture drawing serves two very specific functions. First, gesture drawing is a training exercise. Gesture drawing will allow you to see the body as a dynamic whole instead of separate parts. 
The more you practice gesture drawing as a training exercise, the more familiar you'll become with the body, both the proportions of the body and how the different parts of the body relate to one another. The second function of a gesture drawing is to serve as a foundation for more finished work. Underneath every finished figure drawing I do is a simple but dynamic gesture drawing. But over this gesture drawing, I start to draw all of the bone and the muscle and the flesh that a finished drawing needs. So when I'm using a gesture drawing as a foundation for more finished work, I can move the gesture drawing around to make sure that simple gesture drawing captures the position of all of the parts of the body and their proportions before I add any detail. It's so much easier to move an arm or a leg when they're just simple lines rather than trying to move one later on when I've spent 20 or 30 minutes rendering anatomical detail. Now here at the end of this video, I wanna share that when I was learning gesture drawing, I found it to be a very frustrating process. And one of the reasons is that it seemed like every teacher and every artist I talked to had a different approach to gesture drawing. And to make matters worse, when many people teach gesture drawing, they use phrases that are more poetic than practical. A lot of time you hear phrases like, gesture drawing is the flow of the body or the rhythm of the body or just feel your way through the pose. And to be clear, I agree with these ideas, but they're very esoteric and difficult to apply. So hopefully what I've given you is a much more practical idea of what gesture drawing is and how to use it in your figure drawings. So here's your project. I want you to commit to doing at least 10 gesture drawings, each from a different pose. Each gesture drawing should take you no more than five minutes. If you need to, you can set a timer. Now with gesture drawing, if it only takes you two or three minutes, that's fine. But remember, these shorter pose times will force you to simplify the figure. Remember, we don't want detail, we want a simple but dynamic depiction of a pose. Now ideally, you'll be drawing from live models whenever you can. But if that's impractical, you're welcome to draw from reference photos. On my website, I have some free reference poses you can draw from, so I'll leave a link in the description. So here in this video, I'm asking you to do 10 gesture drawings. But the reality is, you should be doing hundreds, if not thousands of gesture drawings as you're learning. Gesture drawing is one of the best ways you can familiarize yourself with the human body to understand it as a dynamic whole and to understand how all of the separate parts of the body flow together. Now, of course, there's a lot more to gesture drawing than what I've taught here in this video, but hopefully this has given you a clear idea about what gesture drawing is and how to apply it in your own work. So my goal with these videos is to provide high quality drawing instruction to as many people as possible. So if you'd like to support me in this endeavor, please like and subscribe.